If you're in the middle of a bad losing streak in chess, you know that it comes with a lot of frustration and anger, which really takes the fun out of playing the game. You probably also know that the deeper you let yourself sink into these feelings, the worse it gets. In this video, I'll tell you what has worked in my experience to overcome tilt and avoid entering that downward spiral in the first place. So I've only been playing chess a little over two years, but I do have some experience with tilt. Two days ago, I finally hit 1900 and then I promptly dropped about 45 points and now I'm back down in the 1850 range. I kept just saying like, okay, just one more game, like I'll stop as soon as I win and I just could not win. I lost like five or six games in a row. And that wasn't the worst of it. I dropped all the way back down to 1775 in the next three days. So of course, if you've seen that video, you know that I eventually overcame my period of tilt and slowly over the next couple of months, I reached my goal of 2000 rapid on chess.com, but I wanted to go back and look at what exactly was going on when I was losing all those games in such a short period of time. So I recently sat down and went through all of the losses I had online during this period and there were a few wins and a few draws in there, but it really was primarily losses. So this was a very intense losing streak that I had and it wasn't something I'd ever really experienced before. Of course, I think this kind of tilt is a lot more common in faster games like Blitz and Bullet, at least in my experience, my rating graph is a lot more spiky. Um, you know, you win fast, you lose fast. But with these 10 minute games, it's really a lot of time that I was investing. And so the constant like negative emotion that I was experiencing was starting to really weigh on me by the end, of course. And as I was going through these games recently, it was really interesting to see sort of the psychological deterioration that happened as I just continued to lose and lose and lose. I was playing worse and worse. My accuracy just kind of kept going down. I was getting into time pressure a lot. I was messing up my openings. It was just a very, very bad situation. In this document, I just quickly noted which move was sort of the first major mistake or blunder that I just could not come back from for the remainder of the game. And as you can see, kind of embarrassingly, a lot of times this was happening very early. All these yellow ones is what I would consider the first mistake being in the opening. And for a 18, 1900 on chess.com, that definitely should not be the case. If I did manage to make it out of the opening, Another thing I noticed that was happening in my middle games is I was getting very aggressive and sort of forgetting about the safety of my king. I've done these kind of mass analyses of my games in the past and this is actually very uncharacteristic for me. So obviously the psychology of losing was playing some part in the way that I was approaching the game. I was also playing in a way that was very perfectionistic and so a lot of times when I did manage to make it all the way to the end game, I was down a lot of time and in a 10 minute game you don't get any time back per move and so even if the position was equal, a lot of times I would blunder in the last second simply because I was down two or three minutes on my opponent. So probably the best thing I did to get past this major period of tilt was to set a limit for how many games I was going to play in a day. And you have to be pretty disciplined in order for this to work. So if I set my goal at two games a day, two rapid games, even if I lost both of those games, I had to make myself stop playing. I couldn't get into the mindset of, oh, I just want to win one, or I just want to get back to the rating that I was when I first started, because that's how you start that downward spiral. If you do have more time and you set your game limit at a higher number, say five to 10 games, but you feel yourself sort of sinking into that feeling of tilt or going on that losing streak, it's much better to just stop while you're ahead. This isn't to say that you should be scared of losing or even losing several times in a row. You can't win every game, of course, but it's really about paying attention to where your mind is at. At the end of the day, chess is a game and it's supposed to be fun. So if every time you sit down to play chess, you find yourself in these negative emotions, it's just not going to be fun for you anymore. So if you find yourself in a losing streak, a very tangible piece of advice is simply to take a break. And this can be short or long. It really depends on how long it takes for your mind to feel kind of fresh and reset. I would suggest getting up and moving around that helps get your blood flowing again and sort of helps get you away from the experience of just staring at the board, especially if you're playing on your computer. You won't be playing your best chess if you are in this negative frame of mind. And so it's much better to just take a break and then come back when you feel like you're ready to look at the positions you're going to get with objective eyes. So while you're taking your break, give yourself some time to indulge in that negativity. And then once you feel yourself sort of calming down, cooling off, 
then it's time to put it away and move on with a more objective frame of mind. You can also take a longer period of time off, you know, several days to a week if you're in a really bad period of tilt. The problem that I've often found with that though is that when you do come back, it feels like there's a lot riding on that first game. And if you lose it, you have to have a lot of mental toughness to stop yourself from going into an even worse spiral than before. So you know yourself best, you'll know if it just will take you a few minutes to recover or if you'll need a couple of days to come back and start playing your best chess again. Another thing, and this might be probably the most painful, is to review the games that you lost. When I was going back through my major losing streak, I found that I had not done game reviews for the majority of those games, and this meant that I was not seeing what I was doing wrong in the moment. I was just trying to forget about it, push it aside, and go to the next one. But then the problem was I was making those same mistakes over and over again as the losing streak continued. And again, how long you wait to do this really depends on the situation. If you're playing online, you're playing some Blitz or Bullet or even some Rapid games, it can just take a few minutes for you to feel like you can go back to that game and have a more objective mindset looking at it. In longer tournament games, it can be a little bit different. A lot of times it's not the best idea to look at your loss before the next game starts, unless it's some kind of an opening mistake that you made that you can quickly correct. But when you do go back and review your games, it's really important to verbalize to yourself what went wrong. It's not enough to just say, oh, I blundered. That is not specific enough. You really have to say, okay, my king safety was really bad in this game. I didn't notice that my opponent had this particular tactical threat. And then give yourself an action step to take in the next game so that hopefully this doesn't happen again. In my situation, if I had gone back and looked at those games, I probably would have noticed that king safety was a major issue. So, okay, I'm going to make a point of looking at my opponent's threats and making sure my king is to safety before I start some kind of an attack myself. If you go back and review your games as soon as you find yourself in this negative frame of mind, it can prevent one loss from spiraling into something that feels out of your control. And then when you feel like you're ready, you have to sit down and play the next game, it's very important to clear your mind and remember that each game is a completely fresh start, the last game does not matter, and you just need to play the position that is in front of you. This means that you can't let what happened in your last few losses affect what is going on in this game. So for example, I looked back and I had a game where my opponent was just blitzing out their moves and I got very low on time and I had a decent winning position, but I blundered because I was panicking and because I was down too much time. Well then in the next game, I was so frustrated that I had kind of essentially lost on time that I really rushed through the opening in an attempt to just not get low on time, but then I blundered right away in the opening. You have to focus on the game in front of you and you can't psych yourself out. Like another example is I had lost like something like the last three games in the end game. And so in the next game I played, I was really avoiding trading down pieces near the end of the game, even though it would have been good just to avoid getting into an end game because I was scared that I was going to lose in the end game again. So instead, what I found to be helpful is to just constantly remind myself as I'm playing a game to think of it completely objectively, just play the position and not let emotions that happened in the last few games affect the game that I'm playing right now. If you're still feeling very negative about chess as a whole, I've also found it really nice to remind myself why I started playing chess in the first place. And I revisit the things that made chess fun for me. So it could be entertaining videos or interesting books, just anything that reminds you why you enjoy playing chess. Finally, I'll leave you with two things to remember. First of all, you will not lose forever. The worst case scenario is you drop down to like 200 rating and then you get to go on a speed run and work your way back up. You'll win eventually. And finally, I really like the chess version of this quote, which is that the master has lost more games than the amateur has even played. So if you have high hopes for your chess improvement, congratulations, you are on the rocky road to success. Thanks so much for watching. If you like this video, please consider subscribing and also feel free to share your ideas for overcoming tilt in the comments below. If you'd like to hear a grandmaster's take on this topic, I have to give a shout out to Noel Studer. I will link his blog post in the description. And that's all I got. I'll see you soon.